In a previous video, I described the Coase Theorem and what it is and some of its properties in terms of a simple numeric example. As long as there are well-specified property rights between the bystanders and those individuals, and there's low-cost bargaining between those individuals, through a process of Coasean bargaining, we could achieve a Pareto efficient allocation. But numeric example was potentially misleading because of its simplicity. Its simplicity imposed some conditions that don't hold necessarily in general. In particular, the first property that we saw in that numeric example was that we maximized total surplus by Coasean bargaining. Now that would lead you to believe that another way to state this Coase theorem is to say that if we have well-specified property rights and low-cost bargaining, we will maximize total surplus. But that's not quite what the Coase theorem says, and it says something a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to verify, which is that we get to a Pareto efficient allocation. Wherever we end up after this Coasean bargaining, we can't make anyone better off without making anyone else worse off. The second property, and this one is actually going to have more bite in this video, is that we got the same outcome regardless of who was assigned the property rights. If you go watch that video, you'll see we had a doctor and a confectioner. The confectioner was making noise and the doctor needed silence, and in that case the doctor valued the silence more than the confectioner valued making the noise, so we could assign the property rights to the doctor or to the confectioner. and either case we would end up with silence. In this video when we extend this idea and think about this in terms of an endowment economy, what we'll see is that we don't necessarily get the same outcome regardless of the property rights if there are wealth effects to holding those property rights. But no matter what outcome we end up getting, it's going to be a Pareto efficient allocation. Let's generalize that simple numeric example uh, by thinking about Coase, the Coase Theorem in the Edgeworth box. Here's an Edgeworth box. All we did really was we took the hours of noise that are possible. Um, we can think about uh, that as a good for the confectioner. And we can think about the doctor, if he owns the hours of noise, they become hours of silence. And so that's a good also for the doctor, but going in this direction. Um, and there's a certain amount of money that the confectioner and the doctor hold. And so we can think about the width of this box as the amount of money the confectioner and the doctor own together. And we can think about the height of this box as the hours of noise. Notice that what I'm doing here is I'm generalizing this idea of an externality as a finely divisible good. Um, previously it was just that the doctor could have silence or the confectioner could have noise. Now the doctor could request say 1.1 hours of silence. We could think about trading the noise for money in this case and so that would be the idea of achieving a, an efficient transfer in this case. Let's start off by saying that the confectioner is endowed with all of the noise. This is what it means in the Edgeworth box to think about ownership of the externality. The confectioner has the right, to, if, if he wants to, to make that much noise and he can sell some of that right for some of the other good, money in this case, to the doctor if the doctor wishes to purchase that. And so through this endowment point, just like any endowment economy, we get an indifference curve for the confectioner, and we get an indifference curve for the doctor. This, this allocation E is not a Pareto efficient allocation because there are mutually preferred bundles in this I-shaped region. If there are high transaction costs, we'll just uh, make use of all of the noise that he can possibly make use of. There won't be any transfer because it's too costly for the two parties to get together to transfer, and this is Pareto inefficient. So this is what we mean by an externality problem in the sense of Coase. The problem is that transaction costs are too high. It's too hard to get together, or even if it's not too hard to get together and agree on what should be done about this externality problem, it's not enforceable after the fact, so they don't go through with any deal to transfer some noise for some money. But let's suppose that there are zero transaction costs. In that case, we can actually get a transfer of noise for money to a Pareto efficient point. Once we're at point A, we can't make the confectioner better off without making the doctor worse off. And so notice what we needed here is we needed to be able to identify the endowment point. 
that was akin to assigning property rights. And the second thing that we needed is we needed to have trade be possible between these individuals. That was akin to low transaction costs. Once we have those two conditions, we're guaranteed that bargaining between these individuals will yield a Pareto optimal allocation. And so that is what the Coase Theorem says. Instead of bundle E, now we have bundle E prime as our endowment. And this is the alternative property right scheme where the doctor has the property right to have some silence. We can, we can think about this ex in the exactly the same way. The confectioner has an indifference curve through that point, And the doctor has an indifference curve through that point. What we see is that this point is not necessarily Pareto optimal. In fact, the way we've drawn it, it is Pareto suboptimal. There are gains possible, mutually beneficial uh, trades that could occur, provided that transaction costs are low enough. Let's pick out one such point in this, in this I. For point B, because there is a mutual tangency between indifference curve from the confectioner and the indifference curve from the doctor at point B, that is also Pareto optimal. But notice a couple of things about this. We can't say anything about uh, whether the total utility, if we add up the utilities of these two individuals, is greater here or here. Nor do we really have any idea of what that really means, because interpersonal, uh, com interpersonal comparisons of utility are really problematic, because utility really is best thought of as an ordinal measure, just way that we can rank bundles, rather than a cardinal measure is telling us something meaningful about well-being. Second thing that we can see here is that even though the Coase theorem applies here, well-specified property rights, low-cost bargaining, that gets us a Pareto efficient allocation, B in this case, A in that case, A and B don't have the same amount of externality. If you were looking at the previous video, the simple numeric example had the property that A and B, uh, under different property rights regimes, would have the same amount of externality. That need not be the case, as this, graph, uh, as this graphical example illustrates. But it's a very special case where we end up with the same um, amount of externality uh, under different property rights regimes. It turns out that that is only the case when there are no wealth effects. And let's clean this up a little bit and just look at the Pareto efficient allocations. So in allocation A, let's just look at the confectioner's indifference curves. We can see that allocation A uh, is much preferred by the confectioner than allocation B. And of course we would think that that's the case because the confectioner actually has the property right uh, in, the, in the regime that leads to bundle A being the Pareto optimal point, and he doesn't have the property right in the regime that leads to allocation B being the Pareto optimal point. Or having the property right has an income effect here. It makes this individual better off. And so if this good has, uh, has an income effect, there's not going to be the same amount of the good demanded um, at the allocation A as there is in allocation B. And so as we can see here, hours of noise is going to be a normal good for both of these individuals. And so it makes sense that when you have more wealth, uh, when you actually have the property right, you feel like you have more wealth, and you demand more of that externality good, you're going to have a different amount of the externality good in the various bundles. Both of these are Pareto efficient allocations, but they don't have the same amount of the externality in them. And as a final note, uh, what the main idea of the Coase Theorem still rings true. Regardless of the assignment of property rights, we still reach an efficient outcome. We just need to be worried about whether that is the only efficient outcome as far as the externality is concerned. And we need to be worried about this subtlety about how we think about efficiency. Pareto efficiency is really the technically correct way to think about an, an efficient outcome in the Coast Theorem, as this example in the Edgeworth box shows.